Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I am excited about what God is doing in this season for his people. He is a good God all the time. And I found out that he's a God of every season. Amen. Amen. Doesn't matter what you're going through. How many know that if you're going through something, God is able to bring you out? Amen. Amen. But we must put our confidence and our trust in him. Hey, I appreciate doctors. I tell you, I appreciate lawyers. I appreciate them all. But listen, nobody gets more praise and glory than God. Amen. Amen. So even if the doctor does something, give God praise. Amen. Are you listening? Even if your lawyer did something, give God praise. Amen. Am I talking? Even if you got a promotion on your job, give God praise. Amen. Even if you have a new job, give what? God praise. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Listen, I am Pastor Chips Davis of In Season Ministries, located at 1801 Port Malabar Boulevard, in the beautiful city of Palm Bay, Florida, where we're offering a refreshing impartation of God's word. So today we're going right in the scripture. Here's what I ask you to do. If you would, get a pencil, piece of paper, crayon, ink pen, lipstick, whatever it takes. Write these scriptures down because it is the devil's job to steal the word. You know he is a thief, amen? Amen. And a lot of times we say, well, I'm going to remember it, I'm going to remember it. And listen, the devil will take it. But the Bible says when you write the vision, make it plain upon tablets, then you can always go back and peruse it and study it. Amen. Amen. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Tonight we're going to talk from these two words. Help me say godly, Godly. cardio. Cardio. Godly, Godly. Cardio. cardio. So I looked up the two words in the dictionary. The word godly simply means conforming to the laws and wishes of God. Say conforming. That's what we want. When we're godly, that means that we're not doing it our way. We're doing it God's way. When we are godly, that means that he is pleased with what we're saying, with what we're doing, with where we're going, and hey, who we're with. Amen? Can you shout yes, Lord? So once again, the word godly simply means conforming to the laws and wishes of God. Amen? Now, the next word that comes to mind is the word cardio. Say cardio. I look it up in the dictionary. Simply means an aerobic exercise that stimulates and strengthens the heart and the lungs. Help me say it takes some effort when you're dealing with what? Aerobic exercise. Am I talking? But you know what I have found out is that if we are able to exercise and strengthen our heart and strengthen our lungs, help me say God provides the air for us to breathe. Amen? Amen. Isn't he a good God? Once again, nobody gets the glory. God has it all covered. Amen? Amen. So let's get into this word. I I look at, uh, there's a third word that comes to mind. And it says, remember in the definition of cardio, it says aerobic exercise that stimulates and strengthens the heart and lungs. So I looked up the word aerobics. It says of an organism or tissue. Watch this. Requiring the presence of air or free oxygen for life. Help me say aerobics. 
It requires what? Air. Say air. And what kind of oxygen? Free oxygen. Say free oxygen. You know, I've found out that, you know, we have companies like the power companies, FPL here in, the, in our particular area. Listen, if man could market it, if he could, he, she could make it, many times they want to put a price on it. Amen? Amen. But help me say oxygen is, free. oxygen is free. God provides it. Amen? Amen. Help me say he's an amazing God. Can you imagine God charging us just to breathe? You see somebody standing on the side. What's the matter? Man, I need some air. I haven't paid my air bill. Ooh. Help me say, oh no. But he, what, he allows it to what? Be a blessing to the unjust as what? As well as the just. Help me say, God is good. And we're thankful for it. Listen, once again, I'm Pastor Chips Davis, and we're going to get into the Word of God, talking about godly cardio. I'm going to be reading for the, from the King James, and Pastor Bridget is going to be reading from the Living Bible. Get to your Bibles and go to the book of Psalm 24, beginning at verse 1. Psalm 24, verse 1. Here's what the Bible says. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Pastor Bridget from the Living Bible, verses, verse 1 of Psalm 24. The earth belongs to God. Everything in all the world is his. Help me say everything. everything. In this world belongs to who? Belongs to God. Amen. Everything and everybody in this world belongs to God. Let's go deeper. The book of Acts chapter 17 verse 28. And we're going to read from the A clause. Book of Acts chapter 17 verse 28. The A clause. Here's what it says. For in him we live. And move and have our being. Amen? Help me say, it's in the Lord that we what? Live. It's in him that we what? Move. And it's in him that we have what? Our being. Pastor Bridget, simply that first line in uh, verse 28 from the Living Bible. For in him we live and move and are. Help me say, I am, I am. who I am, I am because of God. Amen. Because of God. If God did not want me to be, I would not be. Are you listening? Amen. But help me say, I have to give the glory and the honor and the praise to God. He is worthy of all the praise. Let's go a little deeper. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 beginning at verse 32. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 beginning at verse 32. Here's what the Bible says. Watch this. But I would have you without carefulness that he that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Verse 33, but he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Verse 34, there is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Verse 35, the Bible says these words, and this I speak for your own profit, 
not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is calmly, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. How many know that the devil is a master of distraction? He's doing something over here. He want to distract you so you can't hardly see. Amen. Can't hardly function. But listen, you've got to understand that our God is not a God of confusion. Amen. But of what? Peace. Help me say he's a peace for God. So therefore, his word comes to bring us peace. Pastor Bridget, if you would start from verse 32, reading from the Living Bible. In all you do. I want you to be free from worry. An unmarried man can spend his time doing the Lord's work and thinking how to please him. Help me say the unmarried man. God has something for you to be doing. You need to be spending your time doing the Lord's work. Amen? The unmarried man needs to be spending his time doing what? The Lord's work and, say and, you must be thinking of how can you please the Lord. That's all God expects of you to be doing. Spending your time figuring out what it is that I can do to bless God. But it goes further. Pastor Bridget, verse 33. But a married man can't do that so well. He has to think about his earthly responsibilities and how to please his wife. The married man has a little more responsibility. It doesn't mean that he forgets about God, but he also has to what? Think about how to please his wife. Please understand, a wife is a woman that was born a woman and remained a woman, not someone that did transgender this and change this and became a woman. Help me say, oh no. God's definition of a woman is who he made to be a woman. Can you shout, yes, Lord. Oh, this, that's not a popular message. But you know what? It's not about popularity. It's about pleasing God. Amen. Amen. Let me say it again. The wife is a woman that was born a woman with all the parts, with ovaries and everything, that she's capable of having children if God so ordained it. Amen? Amen. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. Pastor Bridget, continue reading. His interests are divided. It is the same with a girl who marries. She faces the same problem. A girl who is not married is anxious to please the Lord and all she is and does. Stop. The young ladies, the women who are not married, they need to be spending their time in figuring out how they must best please the Lord. Amen? I didn't write it, but I must share with you. Many times our single women are getting distracted. Amen? Many times our single men are getting distracted. But God has a plan for the single woman and the single man, and that plan is all about him. Can you shout, yes, Lord? If you're single, this word is talking to you. That we need to what? Get back to the point where what? The single person is spending their time pleasing God. How many know that devil will have you what? Doing everything and what? Everything that God does not approve of. But help me say we don't want that. Amen. Amen. It's quiet in here. Pastor Bridget, continue reading. But a married woman must consider other things such as housekeeping and the likes and dislikes of her husband. So the married woman has a little bit more responsibility on her life. Yes, she still must please God, but she also has to what? Please her husband. Amen? Pastor Bridget, continue reading verse 35. I am saying this to help you, 
not to try to keep you from marrying. I want you to do whatever will keep, help you serve the Lord best with a few other things as possible to distract your attention from him. See, God doesn't want even in your marriage for you to what? Be distracted from him. Amen? He wants you in your marriage. And this is why it's very important when you're in the dating area to find someone that not just come to church, but someone that loves God. Amen. See, there's a lot of sinners that come to church. Amen. And many of them, the devil sins to get you out of the church, Amen. to get you to become a sinner. Are you listening? Amen. But God is understanding that God wants that what? That godly man to love God enough to even in a marriage situation, make God what? His choice. The wife. Even in a marriage situation, God wants you to spend time pleasing your husband, but also do not forget about him. Can you shout, thank you, Lord? Thank you. Let's continue on. The book of Romans, chapter 6, beginning at verse 12. Romans, chapter 6. We're talking about godly cardio. Romans, chapter 6, beginning at verse 12. Here's what the Bible says. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. You see that word? Pastor Bridget, verse 12 from the Living Bible. Do not let sin control your puny body any longer. Do not give in to its sinful desires. Do not give in to the sinful desires. That's what sin is. In other words, things that we say and do that God does not approve of, then it's going to cause a separation from God. And we never want to be separated from the what? The spirit of God that gives us life. Once again, aerobics, air, say air free air amen so we want to understand that the god that controls our air we want to be able to please him so he won't what cut off the air amen can you shout yes lord so the sinful desires cannot be a part of the christian's life go on it goes on verse 13 the bible says neither yield watch this ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God Pastor Bridget verse 13 from the Living Bible do not let any part of your bodies become tools of wickedness. Help me say, no parts of your bodies. Now, we understand that many people have curves and they look very good. If a, if a gentleman works out, um, I used to have a chest, but it kind of has fallen a little bit, you know, down in this area here. But oh well, amen. My son says he's going to try and get it back, but I don't know. It might be a lost cause. But listen, even if you have that nice physique, amen. Talking to the men. Listen, God does not want you to use any part of your body for sin. Amen? Can you shout yes, Lord? Help me say no sinning. Ladies, you might be very curvy, but don't use any part of your body for sin. God does not approve of that. Can you shout yes, Lord? Continue reading, Pastor Bridget. To be used for sinning. But give yourselves completely to God. Read that last part again. But give yourselves completely to God. But what? Give yourselves completely to God. Help me say completely. What that is saying, God wants your lifestyle. Not just while you're in church, but especially when you're out of church. God wants your life and your lifestyle to be what? A lifestyle that's pleasing to him. Can you shout yes, Lord? 
Can you shout, thank you, Jesus? Continue reading. Every part of you. Every part. For you are back from death, and you want to be tools in the hands of God to be used for his good purposes. This is what God requires of us. This is what God wants from every believer for us in our day to be asking God, God, how can I please you today? God, what is your perfect plan for my life today? Amen. Many times Satan don't want you to ask those questions. Many times we plan our day, we plan our week, we plan our month, we plan our year, and it doesn't include God at all. As if God can't see, as if God doesn't know. Help me say he's everywhere. And he sees everything, amen? And once again, he controls our air. So we've got to get to a point that we stop trying to please the flesh and start back pleasing God, our maker, our creator, the one that made this world, and he controls everything and everybody within the world. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes. Pastor Bridget, continue reading. Sin need never again be your master. Never again. For now, you are no longer tied to the law where sin enslaves you. Glory. But you are free under God's favor and mercy. Let me say God's favor. God's favor. I'm free under what? God's favor. Amen. Help me say it's the favor of God. Favor. It's the mercy of God that kept me while I was in my sinful state and allowed me the chance to come over to him. And now I am a part of God's favor and he wants me to live like it, amen? He wants me to walk like it. He wants me to talk like it. And anybody that comes in my path, they need to leave with what? The mindset that that's a man of God, amen? That that's someone that's trying to please God. That's what he wants. Ladies that, and wives, God wants us to live in such a way that, listen, when someone crosses your path, that they need to leave with, wow, that is a true woman of God. Amen? How many know that devil will tempt you? Won't he do it? But there's what? No temptation that you can't overcome if you, what? you want to please God. Because God, how many know that the Spirit of God will show you the devil? And many times, all you have to do is listen to the conversation. Amen. Am I talking? Amen. A lot of times they may talk, start out talking about God, but then they'll switch to something else. Look at David said, don't switch when they switch. You need to what? Maintain your godliness. Amen? You've got to understand that many times when we are taken advantage of, it's because we didn't stop a situation before it really got what? started am i talking can you shout yes lord god is saying he wants to be a part of our lifestyle he does not want sin to ever again be our master he doesn't want you standing before him trying to what give an excuse as to why you went back into a dark place while you were in the light while you were walking in the light talking in the light then all of a sudden something or somebody came into your life and caused you to what go back into the dark place you've got to leave the dark things alone you've got to leave the dark people alone and what walk in the light can you shout yes lord, yes, lord. don't do it for me you got to do it for you because God is what? He's watching and he doesn't miss anything. And we want God's favor. Say God's favor, God's favor. over our life. Amen. How many want the favor of God over their life? Amen. Then we've got to do it God's way. Amen. Are you listening? And even if you're in a bad situation, it's time what? To what? Come out. Say come out. God is giving us time to what? Come out. He's allowing us to breathe his air, giving us a chance to what? Come out. Can you shout, thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Pastor Bridget, continue reading. Does this mean that now we can go ahead and sin and not worry about it? Mm. For our salvation does not depend on keeping the law, 
But on receiving God's grace, of course not. Again, from, from the King James, what then shall we sin? Mm. Mm. Because we are not under the law, but under grace. And the answer is, God forbids. Help me say, no sinful lifestyle is going to make you a candidate for heaven. Yes, Jesus paid it all. But he paid it in such a way for us to come out and leave it alone. Not to what? Keep coming out and going back in. Come out, going back in. Come out, going back in. Come out, going back in. Are you listening? God wants us out and what? Stay out. Just because we're under grace. I keep telling you, I preach this, I teach this. Grace is not going to put you in heaven when you're living like hell. Because God forbid it. You know what God means? You know what God forbid means? That means he's not going to allow you to stand before him and say, God, I came and I gave you my life in 1920. 1930, 1960, 2001. Then after that, I went out and started hoeing around, sinning around, and I was dying like that. But you got to remember Jesus Christ. He, no, God got to say, uh-uh, I forbid that. The moment that you went in darkness, you have what? Canceled out all that good that happened before. Now I'm looking at you in darkness. We've already studied this, amen? Anytime you come out of darkness, into light God has forgot about your darkness now he sees you well in the light you must understand that where you are currently that's what God approves even if you won a thousand souls last year for Christ what are you doing for him when right now can you shout yes Lord God is calling us listen grace once again grace is not going to save you if you choose sin. And don't get upset with God. He has it right here in his word. Shall we continue to sin just because we're under grace? God forbids. The answer is no. Help me say no. Verse 16, Pastor Bridget, read. Don't you realize that you can choose your own master? Stop, stop. Listen. Even though God may have a plan for me, I can still choose my master. Let me say, that's scary. In other words, I can choose the devil over God. Are you listening? And I choose him by my lifestyle, by my what? What comes out? My conversation. Amen? You must understand that even though salvation is offered to us, we still have a choice and we can choose which master we're going to what serve under once again verse 16 says don't you realize that you can choose your own master that's a question mark continue reading pastor bridget you can choose sin with death wow or else obedience with acquittal help me say you can choose sin and what? For the wages, y'all better hear what I'm saying. For the wages of sin is yes. death. In other words, if you choose the devil's side, you're going to die. You're going to spend your eternity in hell. I don't care how good you can sing. I don't care how good you can preach. Are you listening? If you choose a lifestyle of what? Ungodliness, that equals death. But, say but. If you bring your body under subjection, are you listening, to what God wants? Are you listening? And start living a life and a lifestyle that God approves, being obedient to his word, being obedient to his will. God says that means what? Acquittal. Mean, that means that when you stand before him, even though there were times in your life that you walked in a guilty place, but now you made a change to live holy. You made a change to live godly. And you're what? Into your godly cardio, wherein that you're, you're what? You're practicing pleasing God. God is saying that I will hold you not guilty. 
guilty because the blood of Jesus has covered that. Can you shout, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. Can you shout, thank you, Jesus? Continue reading, Pastor Bridget. The one to whom you offer yourself, he will take you and be your master. Oh, oh wait, wait a minute. The one whom you offer yourself to. The Bible says he will take you and he will be your master. And you, me, we will be his slave. Now watch this. If I choose Christ as my master, he takes me. Are you listening? And I will never be greater than Christ. So Christ will always, Jesus Christ will always be my master. Are you listening? When I choose righteousness. But I will always become a slave to the will of God. Or, say or. If I choose Satan to be my master, he will take me. And I will become a master to sin. Do you, have you ever met someone that has really mastered the sinful lifestyle? Oh, nobody's saying anything. Mm. Amen. There's some smooth operators out there. Are you listening? Hey, listen, you've got to understand that whoever you decide to yield yourself to, be it God or Satan, you will never be in control. They will always be your master. You will always be their slave. Say always. always. And you've got to see it that way. You are either going to be a slave to God, which is righteousness, or you're going to be a slave to sin, which is ungodliness. And God is saying, we make the choice. Because why? We offer ourselves to one or the other. You know what that means? That means that if we have the Holy Ghost abiding on the inside and we choose Christ to live by, Satan can't touch us. Are you listening? But it also means if we choose Satan and we're not going to yield to the teachings of Christ, we're not going to yield to the lifestyle of Christ, as powerful as the Holy Ghost is, he will not violate our will to what? Stay on Satan's side. Help me say you're going to die in sin. And that's a dangerous place to be. But either master, we become a slave to that master. I remember there were years in my life mm, that I spent in sin, sinful lifestyle, going to church, still living in sin. Let me say that slower. Going to church but still living in sin. Matter of fact, going to church to get some people out of church to what? Please my sinful appetite. But God, say but God. See what happens is I've gotten to a place in my life that I can remember my past, but I'm not going back there. Can anybody have that testimony? You can remember what you used to be, you can remember what you used to do. You can remember who you used to hang with. But that is not me anymore. Hallelujah. Somebody holler change. Hey. I feel like preaching now. Somebody holler change. Hey. There's a song that says something on the inside. Uh, working on the outside. Bro, I want to change. But watch this. I had to choose light over darkness. Light is always offered to us. But we can choose to refuse it. Uh, darkness is always offered to us. But we can what? Choose to what? Reject it. But this word is saying, whomever you yield your members to yes. as instruments, that spirit becomes your master yes, and you become its slave. Ah, 
or if we can see this word for what it is. Can you shout yes, Lord? Can you shout thank you, Jesus? I hope I'm making it clear. Am I making it clear? Can you shout thank you, Lord? We want to give the devil back all of his tools. Amen. Let's skip down to verse 18. Again, we're in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 18. Watch this. The Bible says, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Say the servants. Of what? Righteousness. Can you shout, thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Say servants. Of what? Righteousness. Verse 19, watch this. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Watch this. Listen very clearly. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, Unto iniquity, so what even so now, say now, yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. Can you shout, thank you, Lord? It's a choice that we have to make. We're either going to what? Yield our members to uncleanness, amen? And iniquity unto iniquity, or we're going to yield our members to what? Righteousness unto holiness. You cannot have both of them operating at the same time. In other words, you're not going to spend half of your time in heaven and the other half in hell. Heaven says it's all or nothing. Say it again, it's all or nothing. And many of us are playing Russian roulette with our soul we look good in church but listen sometimes the devil won't even let you get out of church sometimes the devil will be texting you in church are you listening Amen. trying to what get your mind off the things of God help me say walk in the light say it again walk in the light say it one more time walk in the light can you shout yes Lord Pastor Bridget, if you would, verse 18 start from the Living Bible. Read there. And now you are free from your old master, sin. And you have become slaves to your new master, righteousness. Stop. Did, did y'all hear that master word? See, see, when you're in sin, you're not in control. The devil is in control. When you're on the side of Christ, you are not in control. God is in control. Either side, there is a master that's over you. Amen? Can you shout yes, Lord? We've got to get this in our mind. That there is a sinful master out there that's controlling everyone in sin. And we're just like puppets on a string. We're yielding to everything that what ungodly master says until we come on the side of God. And once we come on the side of God, guess what? God is what? Controlling us. But that's all right. Help me say that's a good thing. Because control of God means life eternally. Amen. Control from Satan means what? Death eternal and the lake of fire. Woo. And the bottomless pit. Where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen? Amen? Who wants that? Who wants to spend eternity in that? Help me say, not me. not me. But then God says you must choose. And it's your actions that will always follow your belief. Continue reading, Pastor Bridget. I speak this way. Using the illustration of slaves and masters. Because it is easy to understand. Just as you used to be slaves to all kinds of sin. Oh my. So now you must let yourselves be slaves to all that is right and holy. Help me say slaves. We used to be a slave to sin. All of us that have come to the side of Christ have this testimony. 
that we used to be what? A slave of sin. But then when we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our life, now we are slaves to what? What is right and what is holy. Can you shout, thank you, Jesus. Verse 20, the Bible says from the King James, For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Pastor Bridget, verse 20 from the Living Bible. In those days, when you were slaves of sin, you didn't bother much with goodness. Say, oh my. See, when you're a slave to sin, then you spend your effort in a sinful lifestyle. And God does not approve of that. Help me say he does not approve. Say it again, he does not approve. He wants us to what? Walk in the light. Amen? He wants us to what? Walk in the light. Say walk in the light. Say it again, walk in the light. Now, I want you to go to this, this scripture. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Here's what the Bible says. Flee fornication. Whew. Help me say godly cardio. Say it again, godly cardio. That effort that we put into cardio, into aerobics, what God wants in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, he wants us to what? Flee fornication. Heaven say run from it. Say it again, run from it. You've got to understand that the what? The godly woman and the godly man must be to a point where their life and lifestyle understands the value of running away from danger. Help me say running away. In other words, Satan is after our soul. Amen. But help me say flee fornication. Say it again. Run away from it. Run away from him. Run away from her. Don't be standing there. Don't give Satan time to what? Lock into you. Help me say run for your life. Say it again. Run for your life. And there, uh, there is a reason why we must flee fornication. The Bible says every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But. Say but. He that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Say, oh my. Say it again, oh my. Pastor Bridget, if you would, verse 18 from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. That is why I say to run from sex sin. Help me say, godly cordial. We got to what? Run away. Say run. Not walk. Not play with it, not waddle in it, but what? Run away from what? Sexual sin. Continue reading. No other sin affects the body as this one does. Wow. Help me say no other sin. Think about all the sin in the world. But God is saying fornication, that affects the body in a worse way than any other sin out there say oh my that's that's hard for us to do you realize how many sins there are but the bible says help me say no other sin affects the body as what fornication does continue reading pastor bridget when you sin this sin it is against your own body say oh my Say it again, oh my. Say it again, oh my. It goes on. Verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? Which ye have of God and ye are not your own Say, oh my. Pastor.
Pastor Bridget, read there. Verse 19. Haven't you yet learned that your body is the home of the Holy Spirit Stop. God gave you? Stop. We've got to get this in our mind. That this flesh, this body, don't belong to us. It's a rental. You ever heard of a rental car? Do you take a rental car and keep it forever? Help me say you, you use it for a period of time and what? You return it. That's how we have to see this body. Satan wants you to say, it's mine. I can do with it whatever I want to do. This word says your body does not belong to you. And say and. You're going to have to give an account of everything that happens in your body. Amen. And God has said we've got to get the spiritual insight to understand that right where we are today. When we hear this word we've got to what? Harden not our heart. We cannot go back into sinful situations and expect God to approve it. He will not. He will not. He will not. Danger zone. Amen. Help me say danger zone. You've got to understand that God wants us to come out of the sin. We've got to learn that this body is what? The home of the Holy Spirit that God has given us. Continue reading, Pastor Bridget. Your own body does not belong to you. My body, this right here, does not belong to me. Ah, you ever heard the saying, ashes to ashes, dust to dust? You ever heard that? You know what that means? Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That means that this body made of dust, you know where it's going back to? The dust from whence it came. Amen? Amen? Listen, don't get comfortable in this. Amen? Because this is really dying. Am I talking? But I don't know about you, but what? I am living to live again. Can you shout yes, Lord? Verse 20, the Bible says, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, say therefore. therefore. Watch this. Glorify God in your body. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Therefore, glorify God. Therefore, glorify God. Therefore, because the body does not belong to us, therefore, God is saying what? He wants us to glorify him in this body that he gave us for a season. Yeah. Flee fornication. Glorify God in your body. Can you shout, yes, Lord. Glorify God in your body and say and in your spirit, which are God's. Whew. Pastor Bridget, verse 20, read there. For God has bought you with a great price. Great price. So use every part of your body to give glory back to God because he owns it. No, use a portion of your body. No, just one hand. Help me say every part. From your head and everything in between to your toes, God says use that to glorify him. Amen? The single person, use it to glorify him. The married person, use it to glorify him. And then you have to what? Satisfy your spouse. This is why, say this is why, you need to be married to a godly spouse. Then a godly spouse will understand you what? Spending time with God. Can you shout yes, Lord? Can you shout thank you, Jesus? Listen at this. This is facts. Sexually transmitted diseases are on the rise. Say on the rise. 
it is saying that roughly 20 million new cases of STDs, sexually transmitted disease, diseases, happen every year. Say 20 million new cases every year. But this is the, this is the st st statistic that bothered me. More than half of them are from ages 15 to 24. More than half, over half of the what? Sexually transmitted diseases are happening to young people between the ages of 15 and 24. That's scary. God says, flee fornication. Your body belongs to him. Amen? Amen? Your body belongs to God. And what you're finding out is you can't really look at a person and tell if they're clean or not. In many cases. Amen? Amen. This is why the Bible says flee. Help me say godly cardio. In other words, run. If somebody's trying to pressure you into sin, what? Run. Hey, listen, you must understand. When Listen, I preached a message a while back called, It's Just Dinner. That's all. You know what that means? A lot of times when somebody take you out to dinner and pay, they want something in return. Help me say, It's Just Dinner. That's all. That's all you're getting. Amen? I was listening. This is amazing. God gave me this word. And on the way to church tonight, there was a pastor talking. He said it was a situation where a young woman had just came to Christ. And she met up with the young man in church. And they started dating. This young man was a minister in the church. Watch this. She said that by the third date, he had pressured her into having sex. Minister, say a minister. And in other words, now the young lady was confused. Because, you know, she was trying to please the man, but then in her, in her inside, she realized what? That that was not something that what? God approved of. Amen? So we've got to understand that even though people go to church, are you listening? That means that that does not exempt Satan from what? Bothering them. That does not exempt Satan from what? Trying to what? Pull them into sin. I said, uh, how many times have I said it? Many times Satan will come to church just to what? Get you out the church. Get you out the will of God. But God is saying, listen, listen at these statistics. Over 20 million people every year. Now that, that's not talking 20 million people total. That's every year. Say every year. Sexually transmitted diseases. Are you listening? Chlamydia. Gonorrhea. Herpes. Syphilis. And you know what I found about syphilis? There's three stages. Say three stages. The first one starts between 10 and 90 days. Looks like sores. Talking about syphilis. If it's untreated, it goes to the second stage. Say the second stage. Between six weeks and 90 days. This is when the body breaks out in a rash. And a lot of times the rash looks like the measles. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. If it, if it goes untreated, it can enter a third stage that will affect the brain, the heart, the nerves. It will cause dementia. It will cause paralysis. It will cause blindness. It will cause hearing loss. And it can cause death. Syphilis. Sexually transmitted disease. Say oh my. And it also says that many people don't, don't even know that they have it. So they're not even being tested. They're just sleeping around. Hoeing around. But God is saying flee fornication. Amen. 
And the last one we've heard a lot about, HIV, AIDS, amen? It's killing people. And what I found is when you're talking to a person, they don't tell you everything right away. That's why you need to what? Slow down and take some time to get to know people. Amen? Amen. They're not going to tell you everything. And you know what? And listen, I've talked to many people in my lifetime. They confront a person. You gave this to me. The person tells them, no, you gave it to me. Wow. Say wow. wow. Can you prove it? You can't. And many people out there, they know that they have certain things and they don't care. And a lot of times they try and attack people with weak minds that are unlearned. Are you listening? Amen. That want to just get out there thinking that they're grown, thinking that they can do whatever they want to do. Woo, especially the college age. Are you listening? They've left home and now what? They're in the college atmosphere. They're in the military atmosphere. Ooh, I'm away from home. I'm away from mom. I'm away from daddy. I'm away from my pastor. And now I can just be free. No. Say no. God is calling for holiness. This body does not belong to us. But we're going to give an account to God as to how we treated this body. Amen. Amen. So I say to you people of God, it's time now. To exercise your godly cardio. Amen. In other words, I'm going to run away from the temptation. Ooh, when Satan comes at me, I'm like, no, this is not going to happen. Amen. And I can't even get into the, the area of date rape. And people putting things in the drinks that causes people to lose three and four hours of their life. They don't know what happened. Are you listening? And say, and sex trafficking. Am I talking to where you trusted someone? You thought that they was all that and found out. Next thing you know, you somewhere in some country somewhere sold into slavery. Sex sins. Listen, this is a dangerous world that we live in. Our only hope is to get in the will of God and what? Stay there. Amen? Amen. Amen? So I plead to you today that if you are out of the will of God, today is your day. Watch this. If you're in the will of God, stay there. If you're in and out, vacillating in and out, in and out, it's time to what? Get in the will of God and what? Stay there. The single people spending their time loving God. The married people spending their time loving God and pleasing their spouse. And once again, if you have the godly spouse, then it shouldn't be a problem pleasing God. Amen. Amen. Choose ye this day. Because whomever you choose, they become your master. And you will always be what? A slave to that master. Be it God or Satan. So I say to you, it's time to accept Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. This is not a popular message, but it is a necessary message for the people of God to understand that God is not playing. When he comes, he's coming for the church without a spot of blemish. In Revelation, he says to those seven churches, I know your works. I know your works. In other words, even though you come to church, I know what you're doing. And I have an art against you. And one of them, he told them, look, you better get it right quickly. Or else I'm going to come quickly and remove the candlestick. You think God is playing? He is serious. He wants us to get in his will. And watch this. He does not want us to be the one that calls somebody else. To go into a sinful lifestyle. Amen. Amen. There's some strong willed men out there. There's some smooth operators. But how about this? There's some strong willed ladies out there. Amen. Sometimes the ladies are more pushy than men. Come on what you going to do? Come on. Come on. What you... <laughs> no. 
Ah, help me say shut it down. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to run from you. Amen. And I'm going to run to God. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. If you're a sinner and you want to receive Christ, repeat after me. Lord, I am a sinner. I acknowledge that Jesus Christ died for my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Clean me up. Make me new. I will live for you. I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Simple prayer, but an effective prayer. And if your heart believed what you were saying, then God has come into your life. He has changed just that quick. Darkness to light. Now we must adopt a lifestyle of godliness. Sometimes it means looking at your situations. Looking at your choices. When you were in darkness. When you were unsaved. And there may be some things. A lot of things. That must change. For the Bible declares that any man. Be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. So my old habits must drop off now. And I must walk in the newness of life. If you do that, God will get the glory out of your life and lifestyle. You need to get into the word. If you don't know where to start, Start in the book of Proverbs that corresponds with the day of the month. For example, if this was the first of the month, read Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs is the book of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Start there, then expand. Second thing I ask of you is to find a Bible-believing, Bible-based church where the ministry is preaching God and you can see that they're living holy. Some churches... The, men, the leadership is not living holy. You don't want to be a part of that. You want to find a, a ministry where the leadership is living holy. Join that ministry so you can grow in the knowledge of the truth. Once again, this is Pastor Chips Davis of In Season Ministries, located at 1801 Port Malabar Boulevard in the beautiful city of Palm Bay, Florida, where we offer you a refreshing impartation of God's word. And I say to you these two words that I say pretty much every day. Be blessed.